Polls are closed and preliminary results for some of the ballot issues are in. Yeah, and while we may have to wait even up to as long as a few weeks for official reports, Chan Sticklin has an update on what we know now. He joins us live from the Mesa County Elections Office. Chance? Logan and Lena, I'm live here at the Mesa County Elections Office, one of just many polling places where voters could cast their ballots this year. As you can see behind me, a lot of actions going on. This is really where all the magic happens. I want to bring in Wayne Williams, the designated election official, into the conversation for a little bit. Wayne, how are you doing tonight? It's going very well. Uh, we've had a lot of election judges working very hard to get everything ready, and so we've released three sets of results. We've got about 55 more, 5,500 more ballots to finish processing and with everything you know all the craziness and chaos going on this year was security a top yeah. issue for you guys going into this election security went very well all of our processes were followed uh, we feel very confident in this paper ballot election that just took place and where do you think that this stacks up to 2019 the last off year for voting where do you think the numbers kind of stack up so it looks like we'll have about 3,000 more people who voted this year about two years ago there was about 47,000 people We'll just barely cross that 50,000 threshold, I believe. And last thing for community members to know, what do you guys want as de designated election officials? What do you want the community to know about what the, wor the work you guys are doing here? Well, these are your community members. They're bipartisan teams. They're both Democrats, Republicans. They're here to help make this election work for the citizens of Mesa County. Thank you so much, Wayne Williams. Thanks. And actually, Logan and Lena, let's take a look at a couple more uh, ballot measures that were on the ballot this year, starting with uh, Amendment 78. If passed, the initiative would transfer power to appropriate certain funds generated by non-tax dollars referred to as custodial funds in the measure from the state treasurer to the state legislature. At the 10 o'clock hour, the no's are 56.35% to the yeses, 43.65%, which numerically is 21,530 votes for the no's and 16,676 votes for the yes. The next one in line is Proposition 119. If passed, the measure would raise taxes on retail marijuana by 5% to partially fund out of school programs. At the 10 o'clock hour, the no's outweigh the yes is 52.28% to 47.72%. Numerically, the no's have an advantage, 20,534 votes. The yeses have 18,580 votes. And finally, to wrap up uh, my discussion here at the election office, Proposition 120. If passed, Prop 120 would reduce the residential property tax assessment rate and authorize the state to retain and spend $25 million in revenue above the state's Tabor spending cap for five years. At the 10 o'clock hour, the no's outweigh the yeses 55.80% to 44.20%. Numerically, 21,288 votes for the no's and 16,862 votes for the yeses. Folks, Again, the magic is happening right behind me. These fine ladies and gentlemen, are they're working hard. They're going to work through the night. We want to make sure everything is accurate and truthful, and that's exactly what Wayne Williams told you. But for now, reporting live at the Mesa County Elections and first on the Western Slope, I'm Chan Sticklin with KREX 5 News. Logan, Lena. Thanks, Chan.